So my next um, couple of videos, I'm going to show you how to make two jigs for your router. This one is more for stationary pieces. Um, you slide your workpiece underneath. You could put it in place with these clamps. Adjust the mortise you want to put in it up here. Um, this whole carriage moves back and forth to route various size mortises on um, various size pieces. And this produces results, I think, that are similar to what you would get from a mortising machine or even a domino. They're very uniform and easily duplicatable. The second jig, which is going to be a separate video, is an easier one. It's a piece of plexiglass that mounts directly to your router base with these adjustable fences on the side so you could route, you could bring this places or route bigger stocks since this, these fences go wider. I've even used it by taking one of the fences off and routing rabbits and dados and pieces with this one. Um, they're both when I made the videos, obviously I hadn't used them yet, but I've used them since then, and they're both awesome jigs. So I'm going to be uploading, this one I know for a fact is a two-part video, I'm going to upload the first part today, the second part tomorrow. Um, the build for this video, I haven't started editing, but I'm kind of hoping to fit it into one video. I'll probably put that up on Wednesday. For my next project, I'm going to be making two side tables for a couch, and um, at Last rough count, I'm going to be cutting upwards of almost 30 mortises in all of the legs. So I kind of decided to bite the bullet and make a mortising jig. Up until this point, I've been getting by with using um, my router table, my drill press. But a designated jig for mortises is something that would save me a lot of time. And that's usually kind of the deciding factor for me with making jigs. Um, I try to avoid making stuff specifically for one project that I won't use again because sometimes making these can be quite time consuming. So the first, I'm going to be making two. One of them is a more stationary jig that will probably cover about 95% of the um, projects I use. The other one will be more so for taking to clients' houses and bigger stocks of lumber. I'll show making that one as well. This is the basic um, principle I'm working off of. This is an article from Fine Woodworking. Um, I'm not going to be posting this article anywhere because you have to have a subscription to access this stuff. Um, I'm not going to lie, you could find this exact diagram online without the subscription if you want to look for it. I'm going to be making a couple changes to modify this to better suit my needs. One of the main was, ones is is this just kind of sits on this piece of hardwood. You can see it on the bench, it just kind of sits there. Um, other jigs I've seen online kind of sit on top of an elevated box. So I think I'm going to incorporate that into this design just so that when you're routing these over and over again, you're not hunched over a jig based on the height of your saw. It's a more comfortable position to hold your router. Other modifications are more so based on the materials I have in my shop. The other thing about jigs is as nice as they are, some of them can cost upwards of over a hundred dollars once you buy all the hardware and the pieces for it. So minor changes, for instance, this is half inch ply, this top plate. I don't have half inch ply, but I have half inch MDF. So I'll be making minor adjustments like that in order to make most of this out of materials I already have. To start this, I have um, a couple pieces of three quarter inch scrap left over from the past couple projects I did. So I ripped it down to 12 inches wide and then I cut two at 16 inches and then I cut two others at seven and a half inches. So I'm going to sandwich these two pieces in between the 16 one 
similar to this, almost like um, a chunk of an I-beam. So similar to that. So that way I could put that front panel right in the front. I could access it from the back as well as put the grooves on the top that I need for the top plate. But also, since I made this outfeed table, you could see the last couple projects I had, I really dinged it up. I made this outfeed table for this top masonite to be replaceable. So with that in mind, whenever I have a jig like this, if you put these little overhang flanges on there, I could countersink two screws, screws right into my table and make this super sturdy. Now this base is probably bigger than I need, but the nice thing about stuff like this with all power tools is, is you're looking for stability and you're looking for um, wide bases and weight to cut down on vibrations. That's why cabinet saws are so much better a couple of reasons, there's a couple of reasons why, but one of the main reasons they're so much better than those contractor saws that are just on four legs is because the weight of the whole thing keeps it stable and cuts down on vibrations. So I'm going to switch out my blade, put my dado stack in there, and cut four dados in here, and then I'll glue this whole thing up. That's going to be my basic carcass, and now that everything fits, I'm going to take this apart, flip this over, and through my groove, pre-drill some holes so I know they'll be centered over these pieces. I can glue everything together and clamp it in place with screws and set it aside for about 20 minutes while I eat lunch, and then when I come back to it, I can keep building on it again because those screws will hold everything in place. I'm going to start working on the part the router sits on, and I have this slab of half-inch MDF. This is leftover, I actually think, from um, the fireplace mantle I made. Regardless, I've been using it kind of as a gluing surface, so I went through with the palm sander and removed all the glue from here. Even though this is clear, I did mark it as bottom because that orbital sander will kind of leave minor uh, caves and valleys in the surface and I don't want that to interfere with the router base. So I have my rough dimensions cut out. I'm going to cut off a slab of this and then cut it down to size. The directions, um, the, the one I'm copying is a 10 inch by 12 inch piece. I'm going to make it roughly that size. Um, I'm not super sticking to their measurements. I'm kind of making it to fit my base now. And usually I would use my radial arm saw to cut stuff like this, but I noticed on my last build that the saw and I believe the fence as well are a little off square. And to be perfectly honest, I don't feel like messing with it now. So until that gets fixed, I'm going to be making most of my cuts on the table saw, but you could even use a circular saw for this. So I'm going to cut that to size. So the top part of this mechanism glides on a piece of plastic that's put into a groove on a piece of hardwood is, and then it lines up with grooves in the bottom of that top piece. That's there so that you can adjust the hole for the mortise based on how thick your stock is. So these guys are made out of plastic. Um, I wasn't going to go and buy plastic. I have a couple pieces of this Corian someone gave me 
probably about two years ago. They were scraps left over from a kitchen. They commonly use this stuff as kitchen countertops. It's really dense, which I like. Um, I've used it for other things. It's easy enough to cut on my table saw. So I smocked it up with a stop block. I'm going to cut a three quarter inch piece, which is what they recommend. And then I'll probably cut that in half for my jig. In the directions they call for using three quarter inch plastic, I didn't, this is only half inch, and that's what I'm going to try using. Um, I don't really think that that is going to make a huge difference. It's just a guide for this to slide back and forth on, which means I'll cut a quarter inch dado into each side, and then this whole thing will be nestled. So I put my top on here, and then I use my square that first line on either side. And then from that first longer line I just used my plastic to gauge the other line and obviously I wanted to stay a little bit away from here because there's going to be screws down there. So now that I have these marks on the top side of this piece and the bottom side of my top I could cut that dado and this I cut to exactly three quarters of an inch so I could put my three quarter inch stack in there, line it up with these marks and make the cuts. You can use a couple different materials for this. I think plastic is a good one and like I said I had this so it was free. Metal's another option. Um, it's easier to drill and machine plastic versus metal obviously. Do not recommend using any sort of wood for these guides. When I first made my cross cutting sled was one of the first jigs I made years ago and I didn't have any material on hand so for the bottom runners that slide in the grooves on my table saw I used wood and whenever the relative humidity rises it, it just kind of binds up in the saw because those uh, will expand and not fit in those metal grooves. So you definitely want to take the time to find and use something that's not going to change um, as much as lumber does with the moisture in the air. So as you can see I tried to get away with just using my countersinking bit to pre-drill these holes and it ended up snapping it. So if you're using um, screws like I am to attach these, make sure the holes you pre-drill are at least as big as the threads on your screws, um, ideally a little bit bigger so it won't snap. It just kind of chipped off the end so it's still usable, I flipped it around. So now that that's on there. My top slides on there really nicely and for this MDF I always go through and put a little bit of wax on the inside and it just really reduces friction and makes everything glide smoothly. The thing I have to make are going to be these two runners that are what their fences that are going to line up with the fences on your router and hold everything in place. So the placement of these is going to be dependent on your router and the size of the fence. I'm going to be making this to fit my De DeWalt plunge router so that means that my fences are going to be spaced apart based on from the back side of my router to the, the front side of it. So I'm going to be making those because you can't really make you could probably lay out all the math, but it's going to be much easier to make those and then decide where that center groove is going to go, as well as the grooves for the two wings on the side and the grooves for the back. 
So that material is made out of half-inch plywood, and I have small pieces of half-inch plywood, which I'm going to do. So I'm just going to cut those down to size. Those guide rails are half-inch thick by an inch wide and as long as your whatever size your fence is. I think mine right now is about 12 or 13 inches. And then, and you can kind of see in the photo, these wings as well as your guide rails have little rabbits routed on the bottom and that is so that dust doesn't build up and mess up your cut um, shimming out your router to and fro. So I'm going to cut two pieces of this and then put just a little groove on the bottom. I probably won't, um, after I change my stack to a regular saw blade, I probably won't even change it back out. I'll just make a couple passes on the table saw. So I put some glue on these runners and tacked them in place with some brads just so it could set up and then I went back in and put some screws in there to really tie everything together. Um, I didn't have short enough screws since this is only an inch to use wood screws. I had some machine screws and if you're into aesthetics I actually think these mach machine screws look better on these jigs anyway. so. The big thing with this is you want to make sure that this rides smoothly in your carriage, but you don't want any front to back play, and I have pretty much none of that. If these aren't square all the way back and forth, this will rock in your cradle, and the mortise you're cutting won't come out perfectly even, but this turned out pretty nice. Um, it's a little tight down at this one end, but I don't think I'm ever going to go past this screw anyway. But the nice thing about having it tight is you could sand off minimal amounts of this to loosen it up. The other thing I did was I've been putting wax on all these parts that are going to have moving parts on them, and it really helps everything slide nicely.